Back in my day, adolescent syndrome meant that your pee pee wouldn't stop trying to talk you into doing non-Christian stuff. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd, the show we hate actually getting called up to shows because like, whose idea was this? I don't like waiting an extra week to watch the next episode of a show. I feel like I'm back in elementary school when I was trying to figure out if Carrie Underwood was going to win the next season of American Idol. This is dumb. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today's Backlog Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. On Wednesdays, I take a look at media that's in my backlog that won't work for the rest of the week. It's it's the most innovative day of the week, really. It, 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 just, it just is. Today, we're jumping back into the anime world to talk about what's probably going to be my favorite anime of the year. Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. その日、アザサガは作田を出会った。そう。ここから始まったんだ。僕たちの物語は。This anime season, I decided once again to try to watch the first episode of every anime that came out this season. I haven't quite finished this undertaking yet. There will be an episode next week about it. But I found some good stuff. I found some really bad stuff. <sighs> and fortunately, I've also found some pretty great stuff. But before I talk about everything that I've watched so far this season, I wanted to talk about what is probably going to be one of my favorite anime of all time. Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai, or Bunny Girl Senpai for short, gave me really weird impressions. Probably about as weird of an impression as you're thinking when I say that long ass title. It is a show that at first glance sounds and looks like it's not going to be good. I mean, the image is just a girl in a bunny girl outfit. The name makes no sense whatsoever. The description also made no sense whatsoever. Frankly, I thought this show was just going to be another Ichi harem anime with bad comedy, dumb tropes, and a stupid gimmick. Instead, what we got was a very beautiful show that utilizes adolescence, humans' most vulnerable state in life, and one of the most unique concepts I've ever seen in anime. Originally, I was going to kind of go in depth about how Bunny Girl Senpai takes a supernatural edge to manifest common psychological problems that teenagers deal with on a day to day basis, but the Channel Mother's Basement already put out a video talking about the phenomenon called Kuki Yomine, which is Japanese and roughly translates to can't read the air or take a hint. He also goes into a bit of the psychological angle that the show focuses on, and I didn't want to completely reiterate his points in this episode, so instead, go check that video out if you're interested after you watch this, and I want to talk about why I think you definitely need to go watch this show, whether you're an anime fan or not. I'm also going to try to talk about the show without getting too much into spoilers, because there are some moments, especially in the later episodes, that really had me quite shocked at what they were doing, and I thought they were just really cool moments that I don't want to spoil for you. But anyways, this show on the surface with its title and its image and its description, it doesn't look that good. It looks very generic. So why on earth am I recommending it to you? The answer is cute anime girls. I mean, do you really need, do you really need another reason? Come on, that should be reason enough. Actually, the real answer is the main premise of the show. Essentially, in this world, there's this thing called adolescent syndrome or puberty syndrome. Not many people know about it or how exactly it works, but in the case of the main characters, when some children become teenagers, they start to deal with these supernatural issues. The first three episodes deal with Mai, the bunny girl senpai. Mai is a celebrity that starts to become invisible to people. Not just hashtag irrelevant invisible, but like, physically invisible to the human eye and then eventually erased from the memories of everyone that knew her. So after Mai's arc is finished, the following three episodes deal with another girl that has another supernatural issue and so on and so forth. All of these issues are dealt with through the help of the main protagonist, Sakata. In most anime, Sakata would be the main protagonist that's just a teenager who makes a bunch of jokes that are perverted and wants a harem. Fortunately, this anime does not go head first into those tropes. Instead, we get genuinely great character interactions and relationships. 
comedic moments that actually make you laugh instead of cringe, and a show that keeps you on the edge of your seat because you don't know what's going to happen next. It's honestly and seriously one of the more beautiful anime I've seen in a while. But my favorite thing about the show has to deal with what's underneath, rather than what's presented to us. See, almost every main character has to deal with some kind of supernatural issue. Mai, the bunny girl senpai, like I said, becomes invisible. Kaede, the protagonist's sister, ends up physically injured after some cyberbullying. I'd talk about the other supernatural issues that the other characters deal with, but I don't want to actually give those away because not knowing them actually made me enjoy the show even more. But again, the show deals with this thing called puberty syndrome, but it doesn't exactly explain how or why this is happening to each of the characters. Instead, we get some kind of like scientific pseudoscience reasoning behind it, which I kind of say they made sense and personally I was like very interested in it because I've been really getting into physics lately. But we don't know the actual reason behind this phenomenon. And that's what makes Bunny Girl Senpai so interesting to me. It's the meaning behind the curtain rather than what we're presented. It's not about the relationships as much as it is about growing up and becoming an adult. It's about dealing with these issues that teenagers often have to deal with. It just so happens that those issues have manifested into supernatural issues. I'll use the protagonist sister Kaede for example, because there's not a lot of information on her yet in the show, and so I wouldn't actually be spoiling anything if I give the right theory that I think is gonna happen. In the first episode, we find out that Kaede was in middle school when she was subject to cyberbullying. This made her extremely insecure and she ended up with a bunch of cuts and bruises over her entire body. In order to fix this, Kaede literally stopped going to school and throughout the series, she ends up staying at home with her older brother all the time. She has no contact with anybody else and so the cyberbullying stopped, which stops the cuts and bruises. Unfortunately, this is just a temporary measure. Eventually, Kaede is going to have to grow up, and I have a feeling that we'll see this at the end of the show, since throughout the story, Kaede will have seen multiple other people deal with these supernatural issues and puberty syndrome and learn how to grow up. In reality, the issue that Kaede faces is just like the other issues in the show, issues that real life teenagers have to deal with in the modern era. Cyberbullying, for instance, is extremely common now, as unfortunate as it is. And instead of supernatural cuts and bruises happening, sometimes teenagers will commit self-harm as a way to deal with bullying. The other way that they may deal with this is by retreating, staying at home, quitting school, and not interacting with anybody. What's even more unfortunate is that bullying is way more present in Japan, so this is a very real issue. Kaede's arc will hopefully end with her realizing that other people's opinions don't matter, and hopefully she'll stand up and face her fears head on. That'll not only get her out of the house, but it'll also stop the supernatural puberty syndrome that's occurring to her. In fact, we see a very similar arc with many of the other characters throughout the show. Puberty syndrome occurs in a character and for some reason, Sakata, the main protagonist, is able to see this affect each of these characters and this allows him to help overcome their issues. And that's what's so truly beautiful about this show because not only are there real life lessons here, but it does it in a way where you're more focused on the character development and the growth without the show specifically spelling out everything. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to go watch this show, whether you're an anime fan or not, because I think you're going to really enjoy it. Not only that, if more people watch this show, we can get the original light novel and the manga, like, produced in English, which would be really dope. There's also a movie coming out next year that's going to tell, like, the ending of the story, or at least what's out there so far. So I don't think we're going to get a season two. I think that's actually impossible, unless more of the light novel is written, and then we can get that adapted. I, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work, but I do want to read... I do want to read this because I really, really love this story. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. In today's world, everybody needs a website. If you're a content creator like myself, you need a website. If you own a business, you need a website. If your first name is Susan and you got 25 cats you want to share with the world, you need a website. But in order to have a professional sounding website, you gotta have it hosted. Here's where Bluehost comes in. Starting at just $3.99 a month, you get a free domain, you get free SSL included, one-click WordPress installs, and 24-7 support. 
As someone who worked in a web development company for two years, I can tell you that a lot of hosting sites make things way too complicated to put in your domain name. So having this one-click WordPress install is not only a great feature, but a huge time saver. Check out the link in the description box below to get your free domain name today and tell them Zach sent you. That's all the time we have for today. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button. You can hit the dislike button as well if you want to, but just know I'm gonna be sad because of the cyber pulling, man. Oh, and also since this is the next video that I've been able to record since it's happened because of the backlog and everything, thank you so much for 500 subscribers. Uh, I actually hit that on a day where life was just really, really um, So I haven't really been able to truly celebrate the number, but it is, Unfortunately, it is just a number, or maybe fortunately, it is just a number. But I think what I'm really grateful for specifically is the support that I've had on this channel. Uh, the channel's only been around for like a year and a couple months, so it's incredible that I was able to actually hit this milestone way sooner than I thought I would. I've never hit 500 subscribers on the channel, so I just wanted to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Now, uh, go watch Bunny Girl Senpai. Come back tomorrow for another episode of Your Everyday Nerd, and I will see you there. Goodbye.